Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Analog Signal Generation. In this short presentation, we'll give you a brief overview of what analog signal generators are and the different types of signals that can be created using analog signal generators. Signal generators can be divided into two major categories, analog signal generators and vector signal generators. Analog signal generators are primarily used to generate so-called CW or continuous wave signals. In other words, unmodulated carriers. As the name implies, analog signal generators are, however, also used to generate signals with analog modulation, such as amplitude modulated, frequency modulated, or phase modulated signals. In addition, many analog signal generators can also create basic unmodulated RF pulses. And there are also a few special types of purely analog modulation, such as some of the avionics standards, that can be generated using an analog signal generator. Compare this to a vector signal generator, which can create any arbitrary type of digitally or analog modulated signal. For example, a vector signal generator can produce different types of digital modulation, such as the different flavors of Wi-Fi, cellular standards like LTE and 5G and R, GPS and other global navigation systems, etc. They can also produce special non-digital waveforms, like multi-carrier CW, where a large number of individual tones are produced, and vector signal generators can also play back so-called arbitrary waveform files. And unlike analog signal generators, many vector signal generators can introduce various signal impairments like noise and interferers, as well as fade the generated signals to model real-world propagation effects. Given all the flexibility of vector signal generators, why would anyone ever want to use an analog signal generator? There are actually many applications whose requirements can or should be met using analog signal generators. Analog signal generators are used whenever high quality signals are needed, for example, as a local oscillator substitute. They can be used when measuring basic but essential RF parameters like gain, linearity, bandwidth, etc., and therefore are often a good choice for component tests, such as the development of analog to digital converters. In many cases, such as receiver testing, we only need basic signals to verify functionality, and EMC testing uses analog signal generators almost exclusively. For certain special applications like avionics and military radar applications, analog signal generators are a good, if not the best, solution. Analog signal generators have two additional advantages over vector signal generators. They usually cost less, but more importantly, they provide very high quality signals. Let's talk about the second point in a bit more detail. If there's one thing that analog signal generators excel at, it's creating high quality RF signals. Signal quality can be divided into three performance areas. The first has to do with frequency and includes things such as accuracy and stability. The next area is level performance. Linearity and repeatability are important concerns here. And last but certainly not least, we have spectral purity. Both phase and wideband noise, as well as the suppression of harmonics and spurious signals, are key components in spectral purity. It bears repeating that if we want high-quality RF signals, analog signal generators are often the best choice. We mentioned earlier that vector signal generators can produce any arbitrary type of modulation, but there's a lot that you can do with an analog signal generator as well. The core functionality of an analog signal generator is creating basic CW signals, but usually we're also able to change the level and frequency of the signal by sweeping through a range of values or selecting values sequentially from a predefined list. Basic analog modulation also includes our old friends amplitude modulation, frequency modulation, and phase modulation. It's not difficult for most analog signal generators to generate simple unmodulated pulses as well. And lastly, as mentioned before, there are special purely analog modulation schemes, such as those used in avionics, that can be generated by an analog signal generator. The most fundamental signal produced by a signal generator is a simple unmodulated signal, which has only two configurable parameters, frequency and level. Remember that high quality, spectrally pure CW signals are a very important part of many applications and test scenarios. And for those cases where we want to change the frequency and or level of the CW signals, list and sweep modes can be used to change or switch between user-defined limits, states, or values. In addition to CW signals, an analog signal generator can also generate signals with analog modulation. 
The three basic types of analog modulation are amplitude modulation, frequency modulation, and phase modulation. These should all be at least somewhat familiar to you, but if you'd like more information, please watch separate presentations on each of these modulation types. Another type of basic analog modulation is pulse modulation. Let's take a closer look at pulse modulation using analog signal generators. Most analog signal generators can create basic unmodulated pulses. The unmodulated RF carrier is essentially switched on and off to create the pulses. Unmodulated means that the RF carrier does not change in frequency, amplitude, and or phase during the pulse. Pulses can be sent at fixed intervals, but in some cases, analog signal generators can vary the pulse width and pulse spacing by means of a user-defined list. If we want more complex or modulated pulses, such as a chirped or polyphase code, we usually need to use a vector signal generator. In addition to generic AM, FM, PM, and pulse modulation, many of the signals used in avionics, that is, those generated by navigational aids, can be generated by an analog signal generator. These include things like VHF omnidirectional range, or VOR, both localizer and glide slope signals in the instrument landing system, or ILS, as well as signals from marker and non-directional beacons. So in summary, analog signal generators can produce a variety of signal types. Simple CW or unmodulated signals are the core functionality of an analog signal generator, and both level and frequency of the signal can be easily and dynamically changed using list and sweep modes. Simple analog modulation, like AM, FM, and PM, is a feature of most analog signal generators, as is the creation of simple, unmodulated pulses. More complex, but still analog modulation, includes avionic standards like VOR or ILS. Remember that analog signal generators excel at producing high-quality signals with excellent spectral purity. These signals can be used as references for measurements or substituted for things like local oscillators, but they're also very useful in the design and test of RF components. As you can see, analog signal generators offer a wide range of functionality, but more complex modulation schemes, or modulation of digital signals, typically require a vector signal generator. This concludes our short presentation, Understanding Analog Signal Generation. Thanks for watching.